The Samsung Galaxy M21 packs in decent specifications and a big battery at a price that looks great on paper, but can it take aggressive competition from Xiaomi and Realme? Well, watch this video till the very end to find out. But before we go ahead, be sure to subscribe to the Garage360 YouTube channel and click that bell icon so that you're the first to know when we have a new video. At first glance, the Galaxy M21 looks almost identical to the Galaxy M30s that was launched last year. Galaxy M21 also has a 6000mAh battery and an Exynos 9611 processor. More on this in a bit, but now I want to talk about the display because it has become a big differentiating factor for Samsung's Galaxy M series phones. This lovely AMOLED display is the best feature of the Galaxy M21. AMOLED panels are not very common in the sub 15,000 rupee price segment, and it's great to see such a vivid panel here. Brightness levels are good, and so are viewing angles. So you can consider the Galaxy M21 if you are planning to watch a lot of videos on your smartphone. The speakers are adequate, but they sound tinny to me. A side effect of the big display is that it is difficult to reach the top of the panel. Having said that, the power button and the rear mounted fingerprint scanner are easy to reach. The fingerprint scanner is quick to unlock the smartphone and so is face recognition. Samsung has been making phones in the Galaxy M series out of plastic mainly to keep the cost down and it looks like the Galaxy M21 2 is made with a strict price in mind. Now this is one trade off you'll have to live with if you go for the Galaxy M21. On to the software. This is an underrated part of the Samsung smartphone experience and the Galaxy M21 has one UI 2.0 based on Android 10, which has impressed us on other Samsung smartphones. With the Galaxy M21, you need to be careful while setting up the device or Samsung will send you marketing notifications. Other than that, the user experience is quite good. You get nice features like Dolby Atmos for earphones, a dark mode that looks great on this AMOLED display and an always on display mode too. Let's talk about performance now. The Exynos 9611 is a capable processor and can take care of basic apps without any signs of slowing down. However, I did notice that heavy apps took some time to load. The phone could switch between multiple apps without any issues. I played PUBG Mobile on the Galaxy M21 to see how the phone handles it. The game defaulted to the high settings with graphics set to HD and frame rate set to high. I did notice some occasional stutter in the gameplay at these settings. After playing the game for 15 minutes, we noticed that the device was slightly warm to the touch and registered a 3% battery drop. Battery life on the Galaxy M21 has been excellent. This phone lasted us for 2 days with our regular use thanks to the 6000mAh battery. In our HD video loop test, the device managed to last for 21 hours and 48 minutes. The supplied 15W charger takes over 2 hours to charge the phone from 0 to 100%. Finally, let's talk about the camera performance. This phone has a triple camera setup and the specs are on your screen right now. In daylight, we found the camera performance to be good and the Galaxy M21 managed to capture good details and text at a distance was legible. However, we would have liked a bit more sharpness in the output. The wide-angle camera has a lower resolution which is evident in photos. It does not manage details as well as the primary shooter. It does offer you a wider field of view but there is visible distortion. For close-ups, the photos manage to create a natural depth effect between the subject and the background in our tests. The subject was in focus and sharp. When shooting portraits using the live focus mode, the Galaxy M21 lets you select the level of blur in the output. Low light camera performance is not as good as some of the other smartphones we have tested in this price range. The Galaxy M21 managed to keep noise under control, but there was a watercolor like effect in the output. Quality drops further if you use the wide angle camera in low light. The night mode on the Galaxy M21 manages to produce slightly better output but the phone crops the frame slightly to minimize shakes. This phone has a 20 megapixel selfie camera and the selfies taken in daylight had good detail, but beautification is enabled by default. In low light, selfies had no noise, but grains were visible on zooming in. Video recording maxes out at 4K for the primary camera, but there is a 10 minute limit for clips, which feels restrictive. The selfie camera is capped at 1080p. Video recorded in daylight had a shimmer effect which could make your footage unusable. 
there is a super steady mode which delivers better stabilization. There is no stabilization at 4K and the shimmer effect was even worse in low light and the super steady mode did cause a drop in video quality. There are two main differences between the Galaxy M21 and the Galaxy M30s. The Galaxy M21 has a high resolution selfie camera and is available at a lower price. Other than that, the two phones are almost identical. The lower price and the better chance of getting updated to Android 11 at some point tips the scale in the Galaxy M21's favor. However, the Galaxy M21 itself is just an average device at this price point. Competitors such as the Realme 6 and the Redmi Note 9 Pro offer impressive performance and better cameras at roughly the same price. So that was our review of this Galaxy M21. Now what do you think about this smartphone? Let us know in the comment section down below. And as always, for all things tech, stay tuned to catch360.com.